PeteTools.com. G'day guys, Pete from Pete's Tools. Pete here, the boy here again. Anyway guys, what's Pete going on about today? Well, I'm going on about plasma cutter consumables. If you don't change them at the right time, this can happen to your plasma cutter. And it happened once to me, and once bitten, twice shy. Pete doesn't have to be told these things twice, especially when it starts costing them money. Anyway guys, same as usual, you like my videos, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Come say good day at Pete'sTools.com. And uh, let's see what I'm doing this week. And let's get into it, eh? Now guys, the problem that I'm talking about today is with the generic plasma cutters and also with the branded plasma cutter. You're going to have some sort of panel like this up the top. You're going to have your amperage knob here or something much the same. You're going to have your off-on here. You may have a digital readout thing here. But somewhere along here, you're going to have an OC light like this. So you notice I turn it on and the OC light just flickers. Did you notice that? Just a little bit. What I found out, guys, is this machine here has a thermal overload in it. And if you run it past basically the thermal overload and you keep pushing it, uh, the OC light comes on. Once the OC light comes on, the machine doesn't go again, basically. And that's what happened to me in the first two weeks of my machine. I didn't know how to use it, and I couldn't figure out basically how to cut properly. And uh, I just pushed it out of its limits. The OC light come on, no machine, had to take it back to the shop. It only cost me $70 to fix it, but once bitten twice shy, I never do that again. But I'm just going to tell you fellas what caused it, basically. And you're going to have a light like this. It may not be in exactly the same place, but it's going to be somewhere here. It's going to be somewhere on your front panel. And from what I've gathered, guys, it stands for overcurrent or something to that effect. And once it comes on, it's not a good look, basically. Once it comes on, you're taking your machine to the shop because you've uh, burnt out a component in it. Luckily, I only burnt out a couple of diodes in here, so it wasn't a big deal. Um, they, I think they burn out first before it goes into the main circuitry, before it really starts costing you money. So it's just a trick for young players. But I couldn't figure out why this happened. And I'll show you in a minute why, guys. So once again, guys, I'm just talking about the cheap generic torches, but this is going to apply to any plasma cutter that you have and any torch that you run. So when you first start, you first start cutting, you don't know anything about plasma cutting, you don't really know how to cut properly, you're going to end up doing all sorts of silly things, and what you're going to do is end up burning out your consumables. It takes a little bit of practice to be able to plasma cut like this. I don't know how easy it looks, there's a little bit of art involved in this guys. But it's not very hard to learn, obviously, if I can do it, anyone can do it. But it, what it takes is just probably two or three months of practice. And while you're practicing, you're going to have issues of burning out your consumables. And like I say, when you first start, you burn out the consumables. Doesn't matter what torch you're using, doesn't matter what brand it is, doesn't matter whether it's generic or not generic. You're not going to have enough experience to know how far to hold the torch from whatever you're cutting, what sort of angles to cut it on, about your blowback and all that sort of stuff. So anyone who's learning is going to blow through a lot of these consumables. Now the trouble I had when I first got my machine, these consumables here, just even the cutting tips on the PT31, I was paying about $2.50 each for them. And then you put the electrode on top of that. And then when you bugger up, you cut the first time, and you blow the end out of your tip, there's another 2 bucks fifty down the drain. Plus you've got to put the electrode in it as well. I was trying to learn to cut up big sheets of steel, and I was blowing through like 10 of these a day at some stage. And it was costing me an absolute fortune. This is before I discovered how to get them a little bit cheaper, but it was still costing me an absolute fortune, and I thought there's no way in hell I can afford that. So what I was doing was, so I was running these consumables way past their usable life. See, it's got a humongous hole in there, guys, and the electrode has also got a hole burnt in there like so. And you know if you watch any of my videos, guys, I run my plasma cutter flat out all the time, and if you put an extra stress and strain on your machine like so, and you combine that with not really knowing how to cut properly in the first place, Next thing you know, the OC light's coming on on your plasma cutter and you've got to take it to the shop to get it fixed. To tell you the truth, when I first started, guys, I would get about 10 minutes use out of one of these tips. In fact, when I first started, I didn't even get 10 minutes. I pulled the trigger a couple of times and blew the end out of it, so, you know, that's how much it I knew. But you do learn, and it gets easier and easier to do. 
And once you learn how to hold your torch properly, guys, it will, like I say, it doesn't take you very long at all. Then you're going to get a lot more mileage, even out of the cheaper consumables. Like instead of your 10 minutes, sometimes I'll get half a day out of one of these tips, and that's cutting all the time. So it's all a matter of practice, basically. Remember what I said, guys, don't use these tips out of their duty cycle. Once they're buggered, they're buggered. And you know they're buggered, even if you're not very good at plasma cutting, because it won't cut anymore. And you have to actually try and force your torch to cut through the steel, and you shouldn't have to do that. So just remember about that, guys. Once that OC light comes on, you hit the thermal overload, it's time to go into the shop. Also, another thing to check, guys, if you had your machine for a while and it's been in a dusty and dirty workshop, well, all workshops are dusty and dirty, you get all these bits of dusty steel in the air and it uh, doesn't do these machines any good. So another thing that I would check as well, because when I got this fixed the first time, the guy actually said to me, my God, you're lucky that's the only thing that happened to it because your circuit boards were about to short. So when you turn this on, guys, hear that? That's the fan in the back. The fan is actually sucking air from the outside here in through your components to cool it down and then blowing it out. The front here, well it is on mine anyway, it sucks it in the back, blows it out the front, basically. So while it's doing that, it's also sucking all that metallic shit that's in the air in your workshop right through this machine. And what it does is it settles on your circuit boards. So if you've had your machine for a while, just do this guys. Like I said, make sure you unplug it. Just undo the screws that hold the body together. Now I'm not suggesting you touch any of the components in the inside because I don't know anything about electronics. Now my machine here has two sides that you can take off so I suggest if you've got a machine the same, take it off so you can blow right through the thing. Now guys, I'll try and show you how this works. See, there's a little bit of smoke coming off here. I'll try and see, and you will watch it suck it through the machine. I'll turn it on. And we'll try from this angle here, guys. See that flame getting sucked in there like that? That's exactly what's happening to all the shit in your workshop. It's getting sucked into this fan. Right guys, so here's the circuitry of my plasma cutter here. We've got your big top circuit here. You've got all the bottom circuit boards here. Then you've got a whole lot of circuits running in the middle here. Now what happens is this. So I just got a nail guys and I'll just stick a little penny magnet to it like that. And now I'll show you the residue on these boards that just makes it short out. See what happens when I push it on the circuit board guys. I'll show you. There you go. That's what we've got. And all this here is magnetic, guys, and you get a layer of it over your circuitry, and then one day you'll turn your machine on and go, and that'll be the end of that because it's shorted out your board. So the easiest way to do that is just to get your air compressor and just give it a quick blowout. So see all this crap in here, guys? You can actually see it there. There's, it's caked on all over the place, so just give it a quick blowout. So like I said, that's why I took the top and the both sides off so you can actually blow through the machine. So if we try the same here again guys, look at what we're left with this time, nothing. So you know, that's just an easy, safe way to do it, just take the panels off and blow it out. But I'll do that every three months or so, because it's amazing how much shit gets caught up in these machines, guys. So now guys, see we're all spick and span and there, we've got no ugly things that are going to short my bloody machine out, so we'll just put them back together again, eh? So guys, that was my experience for what it's worth. Like I say, when you're first learning to plasma cut, you're going to go through a hell of a lot of these consumables. Make sure they're the cheaper ones so it doesn't annoy you every time you've got to replace them. Because like I said before, it's nothing worse than spending eight bucks every time. Like you just like throwing money away. So until you learn, get the cheaper ones. And after you've learned and learned how to plasma cut properly, then go and buy a bigger machine and buy a better machine. That way you don't use so many consumables, even if they are a little bit dearer. Anyway guys, same as usual. 
like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day, Pete at PeteTools.com. Remember to check in the description below for what I found in my dumpsters this week. And also guys, remember, blow out your machine about every three months to avoid all sorts of nasty things happening to it. And those nasty things, guys, they can get quite expensive, eh? And that really sucks. Anyway, guys, see ya. And don't forget, guys, like and subscribe to Pete's Tools. Yeah! Pete's Tools.com. Pete's Tools.com. Pete's Tools.com.